Welcome back to Hardware Unboxed. In yesterday's GPU pricing update, we looked at the current graphics card market to see what sort of prices would constitute an actual Black Friday sale. Well, today we're going to check on the CPU market, something we haven't done in some time, to give our advice on what sort of deals you can expect during the holiday shopping season, as well as what prices actually make sense for these products. What we've found a lot of over the years is that during Black Friday, there can be products marked as discounted or a deal that aren't actually a deal at all. This is because retailers will often compare the deal price with the MSRP, but will conveniently ignore that a product has actually been discounted below the MSRP for some time. This makes the deal appear more impressive than it really is. We saw a number of times looking at graphics cards where really the special Black Friday price was only $10 or $20 lower than the price from say, last month. You might also find it useful to just have some pricing information on hand to look at when referencing discounts, which may appear for mere days or even hours. We're going to look at the lowest price over the last six months, last month's prices, current prices, and more, thanks to data from PC Part Picker that collects historic pricing for many retailers, as well as Camel Camel Camel, a great resource for Amazon shopping. Before we talk about recommendations and what constitutes a real deal, a word from today's video sponsor. Today's sponsor spot is brought to you by Antec and their Performance One Full Tower EATX case. Designed to support the latest RTX 40 series graphics cards up to 400mm long, the P1 is big on the inside with loads of options for top and front mounted radiators, including the ability to support dual 360mm radiators simultaneously. The P1 comes with four pre-installed Storm T3 PWM fans, with the ability to expand fan support to an additional six. It includes a temperature display, dual 4mm tempered glass side panels, cable management covers complete with Velcro straps for quick and easy cable management, and now also comes in a very clean white version. Exclusive to Amazon US, there are some excellent Black Friday discounts of up to 20% between the 20th and 24th of November. So for more information, please check the links in the video description. I'm going to start with AMD's Zen 3 line because these CPUs are the go-to for people already on the AM4 platform looking for an easy drop-in upgrade this Black Friday. In a lot of circumstances, it won't make sense to go with a full Zen 4 platform upgrade when you can grab parts like the Ryzen 7 5800X3D at a discount. The 5800X3D is the go-to choice for AM4 gamers as it offers the best gaming performance on that platform. As of making this video, it's priced at around $320 US at online retailers or $300 if you happen to live near a micro center and can visit in store. That's a good price, but not amazing as the CPU has been available multiple times over the last few months at around $300 US with the lowest price of $270. It's hard to say exactly what value to place on the best CPU that can be slotted into an existing motherboard, but given previous deals, I'd like to see a little below $300 here, especially given the price of standalone Zen 4 processors. $250 would be a great buy. For gamers that don't need a lot of cores for productivity apps, if you're not grabbing a 5800X3D, the next best choice is the Ryzen 5 5600. There's only about a 5% difference in average gaming performance between the 5600 and the Ryzen 9 5950X, and an even smaller difference between the 5600 and 8 core models like the 5800X, so it doesn't make a ton of sense to pay a large premium for additional cores. Current pricing has the 5600 at around $140 US, with the lowest price seen at $130, and given it's been available at around $140 for quite some time now, I don't think that's much of a discount. Still, given the 5600 is about 15% slower than the 5800X3D for less than half the price, anything around $130 seems like a decent upgrade for those after a low-cost drop-in CPU upgrade coming from much slower parts, like say a Ryzen 5 2600 which is around 35% slower. For other CPUs in the lineup, there's the Ryzen 5 5600X, which is basically a 5600, and then the 8-core models, such as the Ryzen 7 5700X and 5800X. The 5700X is at its lowest ever price, which is a decent deal, but it still costs 30% more than the 5600 at little gain for gamers or those using single-thread limited apps. For core-heavy workloads, it's actually not too bad. The 5700X is around 35% faster for 30% more money, but I wouldn't pay that unless I needed the productivity performance. Similar story with the Ryzen 9 models. At $290, the 5900X makes no sense for gamers as it's slower than the similarly priced 5800X3D, and for multi-thread productivity work, it's around 45-50% to faster than the 5700X for a more than 70% price premium. 
Even though $290 is a historic low with $300 seen occasionally, I think this part needs to be $250. It also should be mentioned that multi-core performance is around the level of the Ryzen 7 7700X available for $320. However, the Zen 4 part is much faster for gaming, so $290 just isn't much of a deal. The 5950X at $500, or $450 at Micro Center, is higher than its historic low from just a few months ago, and $450 is nothing overly special given what we've seen across the last three months. It's slower than the $400 7900X for productivity and gaming, although that requires a platform upgrade, and it currently carries a hefty premium over the 5900X. I just wouldn't buy one for more than about $350. I imagine most people buying a Zen 4 CPU are doing so alongside a full platform upgrade. The good news is that a lot of these CPUs are currently discounted and could make sense over a drop-in Zen 3 upgrade even if you're on AM4. For example, the Ryzen 5 7600 is just $200 right now, a historic low price, and it offers similar gaming performance to the 5800X3D at $320 through online retailers. You're not going to be able to purchase a motherboard and DDR5 memory for that $120 difference, but it may only cost an additional $70 to $80 to go the full platform upgrade. Given the promise of future CPU support, similar gaming performance to the 5800X3D, faster memory and better productivity performance, I think the pricing of the 7600 and 7600X is pretty decent right now and constitutes a deal, especially as it's at a historic low and 10% cheaper than last month. Like with Zen 3, most other non-X3D Zen 4 processors don't make sense for gamers that aren't interested in core-heavy productivity work. In our very latest benchmarking, we found the 7950X is just 8% faster for gaming than the 7600X, and the 7700X is just 4% faster, so spending an extra $100 on the 8-core model makes no sense. To be honest, the 8-core parts are not that attractive right now, even at early Black Friday prices. At best, the Ryzen 7 7700X is 30% faster for core-heavy workloads, but it costs 50% more than the 6-core parts, a larger gap than what we saw at launch comparing MSRPs. $260 would make more sense, that would be a 17% discount over recent average prices and would be the cheapest ever price. The Ryzen 9 7900X is currently priced between $370 and $400, just a 25%-ish premium over the 8-core models, despite offering nearly 50% more productivity performance, and obviously you'd buy this primarily for application use. It also stacks up quite favorably in value to the 7600X, although current pricing at online retailers isn't really a discount over recent average pricing. Around $400 has been achievable for three months now. I don't hate this deal, but $350 would be a great deal. The 7950X is about 30% faster than the 7900X in core heavy apps and is priced about 35-40% to higher, so not giving you perfect value scaling, but it's not far off. A small premium for the best isn't ridiculous. With that said, pricing has been around $550 for a while, so a 5% discount on Black Friday isn't anything to get excited about. I'd be looking for a price below $500. Then there's the X3D parts, which are currently the fastest for gaming. Now compared to the Ryzen 5 7600, the 7800X3D is not exactly great value. It is 27% faster in our latest gaming benchmarks, but costs 75% more, so you're paying a hefty premium for the best. At $350 to $360, pricing also isn't that different to last month, so I wouldn't constitute this as a Black Friday deal, but if you want the fastest gaming CPU, it's also not a bad deal. Anything below $350 sounds pretty great to me if you can get it. There's also the Ryzen 9 X3D models, which are a good choice for mixed gaming and production workloads at its current price. The 7950X3D is nearly twice as fast as the 7800X3D for core heavy tasks, but is only 60% more expensive, is as cheap as it's ever been, and it's below its MSRP. That's a great deal in my opinion if you need this sort of processor. Moving over to Intel CPUs now, and we'll start with the recently released 14th generation, which is a very underwhelming release. The Core i9-14900K is just a few percent faster than the 13900K, so it makes absolutely no sense to buy it at a higher price than the 13900K, which is $500 right now. For gamers, it makes no sense, as you'd buy the 7800X3D instead, or the 14600K, which is just 10% slower. And for productivity users, it's similar to the 7950X from AMD, with much higher power consumption and no further platform support. All of these factors lead me to conclude a great price for these parts is lower than the current asking price. 
The Cry7 14700K is a genuinely new part with additional e-cores compared to 13th gen, which allows it to get within 15% of the 14900K in core-heavy productivity while offering similar gaming performance. At around $390, it doesn't offer much for gamers as it's more expensive than the 7800X3D, but for productivity work, the price isn't too bad up against Zen 4. You'll have to factor in platform and power consumption, as well as the performance of lower and older parts, but something around $350 would be a decent discount. That would make it both faster and cheaper for productivity than the 7900X. The 14600K ended up 17% slower than the 7800X3D in our testing, and the KF model is priced around $305 right now, making it 16% cheaper. It is faster than the 7800X3D and 7700X for productivity work, and power consumption isn't horrific, though you're still dealing with a largely dead platform where the only upgrade will be to the 14900K. The issue here is the 14600K is basically a 13600K, which is basically a 12700K in performance, and the 12700KF is currently available for just $200. So I don't see any reason to pay more than $220 here, accounting for the fact it is slightly faster. Looking back a generation to 13th gen Intel processors, I've already slotted in where I think the 13600K and 13900K should be. Current 13600KF pricing is looking pretty decent, especially considering recent pricing in prior months. Though this is more from a productivity angle, as it's only 5% faster than the 7600X for gaming, while costing 25% more. The Core i7 13700K, though, should be priced more around $300 to match the value of the 13600K in terms of cost per productivity performance and give a really solid reason to buy it over a Zen 4 processor. The Core i5 13400F is hard to justify at around $200 at the moment, as it isn't really a discount. On top of this, it's 10% slower than the 7600X for gaming at the same price on a platform with more limited upgrade paths. So switching over to an LGA 1700 board to get a slower CPU than if you went AM5 makes little sense. There have been occasional sales below $200. I just don't see the value equation swinging into Intel's favor unless this part was $160. It's the 12th gen lineup where processors from Intel are the most heavily discounted, now being priced well below MSRP. So let's see how these parts fare in terms of whether it's worth an LGA 1700 platform upgrade to grab 12th gen instead of newer Intel parts or Zen 4. Where we need to begin is that Alder Lake is typically similar to slightly slower than Zen 4 for gaming. The very best case scenarios would have the 12900K a little ahead of the 7600X. The Core i5-12600K ends up around 10% slower for gaming and similar in productivity performance compared to the 7600X at $140 for the KF variant. That's a 30% discount over the Ryzen 5 7600X, which makes it the better value CPU in terms of performance, though there is the question mark of upgrade support, which is in favor of the AMD processor. I think this is a pretty good price. In fact, I could justify around $150 here, I reckon. 12700K of pricing is also aggressive at $200, given it's 30% faster for productivity tasks, putting it well ahead of the similarly priced 7600X, and seems fairly priced relative to the 12600KF. This pricing essentially dictates what you should pay for the 12600K and 14600K as well, given those processes are very similar in overall performance. I think this is a great price for a part like this if you had productivity in mind, given the 12700KF is more in the league of the 7700X for these tasks. Again, if you're not planning on regular updates, that's great value. The 12600K sets expected pricing for the 12400F as the locked Core i5 model is around 10% slower in games. Current pricing for the 12400F is not hugely discounted compared to prior months, and with the 12400F and 12600F going for a similar price, it makes no sense to grab the 12400F right now. It would need to be priced more like $120 to $130 US. The Core i3 12100F makes a lot of sense at $90 though, given it's slower again for gaming and about half as strong as the 12600K in multi-core workload, so that level of pricing makes sense and I think is a reasonable deal. I'm not sure whether you would do a full platform upgrade to access a part like the Core i3 12100F, but at $90 again, it is reasonable in terms of its value. So looking across the current CPU market, there's a couple of ways to go really if you're thinking about purchasing a processor. If you're on the AM4 platform and you want a drop-in upgrade over an older Zen processor, the Ryzen 7 5800X3D and Ryzen 5 5600 remain the best choices, although current pricing isn't all that special relative to prior months and would probably need a modest discount to get me interested. 
Some Zen 3 CPUs are also still a bit pricey, such as the 5950X, despite recent discounts. It gets a lot more complicated for those thinking about a platform upgrade or new PC build, as recent discounts to Intel's 12th generation Alder Lake processors are making a strong play up against Zen 4 and the AM5 platform. However, you have to factor into that decision future upgrade pathways, which are limited to non-existent on Intel LGA 1700, and power consumption, depending on the CPU you're interested in. If you're not super concerned about upgrades, the obvious choice is a 12th gen system. The 12600KF at $140 is a fantastic price, as is the 12700KF at $200, especially for builds where multi-core application performance is important. You're basically getting a tier up in performance compared to Zen 4 at the same price, while the 12600KF is a great option for gamers, as it's not that far behind a Ryzen 5 7600 while being significantly cheaper. For upper tier levels of gaming and productivity performance, Intel is harder to justify without further discounts. The 13900K is only slightly cheaper than the 7950X from AMD, and it's no surprise to see the entirety of the 14th gen making no sense without significant discounts, given their similarity to 13th gen and even 12th gen. Especially as parts like the 13900K have effectively zero upgrade path, I'd want a more significant discount during Black Friday. Meanwhile, if you do want an upgrade path with potential for future CPU support, AM5 does make sense most of the time, especially for gamers in that mid to upper range. The Ryzen 5 7600 at $200 is a decent budget choice, while the 7800X 3D at $360 is a great deal if you want flagship gaming performance, especially relative to Intel's competing parts. These are both historically good prices too, and while not worlds cheaper than last month, it's not like pricing has been raised just before they discounted it again. Other Zen 4 processors, I'd probably wait for more of a discount, the 8-core model is still overpriced in my opinion, while the Ryzen 9 parts aren't all that different to prior months, at least ahead of the actual Black Friday day. In any case, you now have a good look at what sort of pricing would make sense and what sort of deals to look out for. Black Friday, in my opinion, should always be about the best deals, the biggest savings, and historic low prices. If you're not getting a reasonable saving compared to last month or the lowest price across the last few months, it's not really much of a deal. I'd also recommend you look out for bundle deals if you're considering a full platform upgrade or new PC. Often retailers like Micro Center will offer a good discount if you buy a CPU, motherboard, and memory in a bundle. Our motherboard roundups will help you avoid dud boards, but we have seen some pretty good value there in the past, so check your local retailers. Anyway, that's it for this CPU buying guide for Black Friday. Hopefully this has been useful to you. And if you do want to check out you know, the in-depth performance of all these parts, how they stack up in a much more in-depth way, then we do have reviews on the channel for pretty much all of these processes, I think. So yeah, you can definitely dive in and see how they compare and those sorts of things and stack it up, up against the pricing that we've talked about throughout this video. If you do appreciate these videos and the content we make at Hardware Unbox, please consider subscribing and also supporting us directly through our Patreon or Folk plan accounts links to those are in the description so thanks for watching and i'll catch you in the next one